today we're going to look at the forestry step test, whose main purpose is to assess a performance or predict their aerobic endurance and VO2 max, or in other words, the maximum volume of oxygen they can take in and utilize around the body without fatigue. Now, I use the word predict because the forestry step test is known as a sub-maximal test. This means that a performer isn't working toward or at their 100% intensity. Instead, we work them at a sub-maximal or moderate intensity, record the data and the level of fatigue we can see in them, and then use this to predict or estimate how hard they could be working if we did push them. The alternative to a sub-maximal test is therefore a maximal test, such as a multi-stage fitness test, where the performer has to work and work and work until they are fatigued and they can't go anymore. Before completing the forestry step test, it's essential for a performer to complete a sufficient warm-up. This means that they raise their heart rate, they increase their body temperature, and they also complete some dynamic stretches preparing them for physical activity. In the instance of the forestry step test, we primarily use our legs, therefore they need to stretch out their quadriceps, their hamstrings, and their calf muscles. In order to complete the forestry step test, the performer needs to have access to a metronome and a bench. The metronome needs to be able to achieve a rate of 90 beats per minute. The bench for males needs to be 40 centimeters high, for females needs to be 33 centimeters high. The performer starts by standing on the floor and they then need to step up and down onto the bench in time with a 90 beats per minute metronome. It's important that they don't do this on their toes. They need to make sure that the whole surface of their foot goes up onto the bench and then back down onto the floor. A performer completes this up and down action at 90 beats per minute for five minutes. At the end of this time, the performer needs to locate their pulse and measure their heart rate for 15 seconds. After 15 seconds, the performer needs to then take this number and use the conversion tables that are provided with the test to then see what their likely VO2 max score would be. Like most fitness tests, the performer needs to look for their age and gender to actually work out what their VO2 max would likely be according to the heart rate they recorded in that 15 second period. Once they've converted their heart rate and they've looked at the normative data tables, they can see if they are above average, at average or below average. With the forestry step test, there are a number of benefits, but there are also some drawbacks. We're going to look at the benefits first. Number one, it requires very minimal equipment. As long as we have a metronome, a timer, and a bench, we can complete the forestry step test. Secondly, it's relatively quick. After five minutes, we know what our VO2 max is likely to be. This is very different to maximal tests, such as the multi-stage fitness test, because that could go on for 15, 20 minutes in order to gain a result. A third benefit is that we could do this by ourselves. We can self-administer this test. We can time ourselves, we can plug in or play our own metronome, and we can measure our own pulse. We don't require the assistance of a coach or an assessor in order to complete this test. A final benefit of the forestry step test is that it is sub-maximal. What this means is that it doesn't require high levels of motivation or high levels of effort in order to complete and get the VO2 max score. Instead, we do moderate intensity work, and we then predict or use that level of fatigue that we did experience to then predict what our VO2 max would likely be. However, there are some drawbacks to this fitness test. The first one being, some performers might have the level of fitness or the coordination to complete this for five minutes in time to get an accurate reading at the end. And the second is that we are using predictions. We're relying on conversions or sums to take a sub-maximal intensity or heart rate to then suddenly work out the performer's total VO2 max when really what we should be doing, or could be doing, is using maximal tests to push a performer to their absolute limit to then get a more accurate score or realization of what their VO2 max is. So, to summarize the forestry step test, its main purpose is to assess or predict a performer's aerobic endurance or VO2 max. Performers step up and down onto a bench at a speed of 90 beats per minute. Males use benches at a height of 40 centimetres, while females use a height of 33 centimetres. The test lasts five minutes, at the end of which the performer locates their pulse and counts how many times their heart beats in 15 seconds. Using conversion tables, the performer can then take this score and work out what their VO2 max is likely to be according to their age and gender. So benefits are that it requires minimal equipment, it's quick, it's cheap, it's sub-maximal, so it doesn't require motivation, and it can be self-administered. However, the drawbacks are that we could have performers who lack the coordination or fitness 
to complete the test four or five minutes in time, and also it's a prediction. We're not accurately measuring VO2 max, we're measuring submax intensity and using that to predict or estimate what VO2 max is likely to be. So that's the forestry step test. I hope you found that mini lesson useful. If you did, then feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can be kept updated with all the video and content that we're going to be bringing you. Alternatively, if you want to learn more about the private tuition that we offer or the teaching and learning resources that we write, then visit us at thepetutor.com and you can reach out to my team. I hope to hear from or see you soon.